Hello, my name is Neil Redden. I'm from the Australian Institute of International Affairs in Canberra. I'm joined here today by Dr. John Bezmiers, an expert in Russian and Eastern European affairs, a research fellow at the ANU Centre for European Studies, and author of recently published book, A Difficult Neighbourhood. We're here to discuss Russo-American strategic relations following the US presidential election of Donald Trump. Welcome, John. Thank you. As we know, Donald Trump has repeatedly signaled an interest in thawing relations with Russia and collaborating in areas of mutual interest. What do you think will be the broad contours of American strategic policy towards Russia under Donald Trump? The first point we always need to make about Donald Trump is, of course, that he is nothing if not unpredictable. He's a deeply unpredictable person, has been up till now. It's sometimes been suggested, and there is a little bit of material out there of dubious verifiability, suggesting that, uh, to put it crudely, uh, that the president is the proverbial Manchurian candidate, that he is, in some sense, in the Kremlin's pocket at one end of the spectrum. There are other views that suggest that he is just very, very pro-Russian, quite exceptionally so, but that he's an honest man, basically, that he thinks that this is best for, for the US to have a positive view of Russia and, as you say, to try and find areas of cooperation rather than areas of conflict. But looking at his uh, public statements and also at his appointments and his connections, he's had a lot to do with Russia, he's had a lot of business dealings with Russia, uh, nothing much, I think, that's ongoing, but he has in the past, and so have family members, but also his, some of his closest associates. And in particular, uh, I think we should think of people like Paul Manafort, who was his campaign manager for a while, uh, and also uh, other, other people, the, the National Security Advisor, who of course doesn't have to go through Senate, doesn't have to get Senate confirmation, who has had very close connections with Russia. You'd be aware that uh, General Flynn was invited to uh, an anniversary dinner for Russia Today, which is the great flagship of Russian propaganda. Very, very skillful organization, very skillful. And he was there sitting next to both President Putin and Margarita Simonyan, who is the director and very, I must say, capable director of Russia Today. It's now called RT because they don't want to emphasize the Russian aspect so much. So those are very, very dubious connections. So I don't think we can rule that out, and I don't think on the basis of the evidence so far we can rule it in either. But either way, there is a very strong connection there, and his actual utterances, his policy directions, are such that Putin is undoubtedly delighted. What will, will the Russians be wanting, just very briefly, if I could say that, I think they've got a good chance of getting it by, on the evidence so far. They would like, they would like uh, the United States to agree that Russia should have a sphere of influence extending more or less into Eastern Europe, well into Eastern Europe, including in some senses perhaps even uh, countries currently members of the EU and NATO, but certainly all the countries that did formerly belong to the Soviet Union possible exception of Baltic states, but I doubt it. So that's what they want primarily. They want a new Yalta agreement, basically. They want that to be an internationally legitimized, and uh, Trump is the man who could possibly give it to them. He's indicated already more than once that he would lift sanctions, the sanctions that are imposed. That was another, uh, that will be another of the Kremlin's demands. They want sanctions to be lifted, and they even want compensation to be paid to them for, for American sanctions in the past. Uh, they want to be able to, uh, in particular, uh, to have a dominant interest in Ukraine. And I think what this implies is that they aren't finished with Ukraine yet by any means. And of course, with the President of the United States making these kinds of very, very encouraging noises, the outlook for countries like Ukraine, for Moldova, for the Baltic states, is very, very dubious and they're all in a state of terror at the moment as what might happen next. Some of them are starting to look in terms of a separate peace. You may have noticed that uh, Putin is about to visit very soon Hungary. The, he's becoming a bit of a dictator. Uh, Orban, the uh, paramount leader, I think you'd have to call him in Hungary, uh, he has already uh, opted to have very good relations with the Kremlin. 
which enrages uh, NATO colleagues, enrages EU colleagues, but he's doing it, and the EU doesn't know quite what to do about it. Uh, other countries in, in Europe have some similar or wannabe members, like Serbia, do the same thing. They play both sides of the net. So this is going to be a very, very interesting and difficult period, I think, for uh, the Western Alliance. And just f finally and very quickly, he's already said, as, as you know, that NATO is obsolete, that the EU is a mess, that it's just, a, uh, it's just a, an instrument for Germany to use in its trade wars against the United States. He said things which have caused the President of the European Council to say, uh, just in the last day or so, uh, our four main, four main threats to the EU at the moment, international threats, are an assertive China, an aggressive Russia, Islamic State, and the President of the United States. I never thought, I must say, until a few weeks ago that I would ever hear a President of the European Union say something like that. Remarkable. Do you think that Trump's foreign policy will translate into substantial Russo-American cooperation and a possible alignment even against China? I think uh, Trump may be thinking that. One of his uh, close contacts, of course, is the 93-year-old Bismarck of our times, Henry Kissinger. Kissinger is someone who I think the Russians call these, uh, have been called in the past, the statement comes from Lenin. Lenin said that these people are useful idiots. I don't wish to uh, be unkind to uh, Henry Kissinger, but he's a, a great mind, of course, and a great statesman. But from the Russians' point of view, he's someone they can use. Uh, I think that uh, uh, Kissinger's idea would be, uh, and his advice to Trump would be, that you should use better relations with Russia to put pressure on China. China is more dangerous to you than Russia at this stage. There is no point in maintaining a uh, an endless feud with Russia over a country like Ukraine, which doesn't really matter all that much. I don't know exactly on what words he'd put it, but I think that's the essence of the message. It's not entirely clear to me how much influence he'll have in the Trump administration, but he does have contacts, and he also has contacts with Putin, of course. So I think it's a, a, very, there's a very real possibility that Trump, if he's not stopped, if he doesn't uh, fall foul of other constraints, that he will go along the lines you suggest to seek better relations with Russia and use that in his relationship with China, about which he's expressed himself very negatively, unlike about Russia. So that seems to be the logic of the situation. Whether he can do that depends on whether he is able to escape from the constraints that he's under, whether he can control Congress, whether he can control the decisions of the Supreme Court. Uh, he's already indicated that he'll throw his weight around and sack people left and right, and he may set new um, may set new uh, standards in this, in this respect. But we can only wait and see what happens there. But I think as an intention, I think that would be, that would be uh, probably what he wants. He wants better relations with Russia to achieve various other transactional goals. But, and it's a big but, I don't think Russia will buy that one. And that there are already things in the public domain indicating that they won't. People who have senior positions in Russia uh, saying uh, China is very, very important to us. It's, one of, it's Putin's greatest foreign policy triumph, the strategic partnership with China. It gives him a completely free hand in the West, which is his main grouch. Uh, Putin is, uh, he is of course a KGB man and he's created a KGB state. It's not a figure of speech to say that Russia has become a KGB state both domestically and externally. It's simply sober appraisal of the situation. He would like, I think, uh, above all, to settle scores with the West. And he will make whatever concessions to China to keep China on board. And he will not want to sacrifice the strategic partnership with China, not even for Donald Trump. Given the foregoing analysis, what do you think are the broader implications for the Asia Pacific and Australia's position and interests within it? Implications may be less, obviously, if uh, the US formed some kind of uh, cooperative relationship with Russia which had an influence on China, constrained China in some way, that would be uh, very significant. It uh, would be very significant. I just can't see it happening. And so therefore I don't think that be, we'll see that kind of influence. I think what we may see on the other hand is that uh, Trump's influence will be uh, disruptive 
in the, and it already is, I think, in Asia. He's expressed negative views about Japan. He's expressed very negative views about China. He seems to be toying with the idea of launching a trade war with China. But I think that we can expect to see, we can expect to see disruption in the Asia Pacific, which is a little bit hard to foretell, it's hard to foretell the shape of it. I don't think that any of it will be to Australia's benefit. The big problems with the Russian-Chinese relationship has been that we've seen greater aggression from both of them. The Chinese have been much more assertive, even aggressive, in the South China Sea, and they are trying, as Russia also does, to pick off the nations of the Southeast uh, Asia and Eastern Asia one by one uh, by putting pressure on them. And we've seen with uh, the Philippines there's already been a big success there. I think we can expect to see more of that. It's in the interest of both Putin and Xi to continue this relationship in that way and with those benefits. That's why neither of them will want to, want to relinquish it. But none of that will be advantageous to us. That concludes today's discussion on Russo-American relations. Thank you for joining us, John. A pleasure. If you have further interest in international politics, please visit internationalaffairs.org.au for further analysis and research. And please like us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you. <laughs>